Well, hello again. We're back uh, for another lesson in confirmation. Uh, this is lesson two, what is baptism? Uh, last week, we kind of began looking at some very special ways that God uh, works to bless us, uh, the way he makes himself present in our lives. And, and that was as we took a moment to uh, define what a sacrament is. Uh, a sacred act through which God works mightily and powerfully in our lives to transform, to bring us forgiveness of sin. Uh, so last week we kind of looked through a definition of a sacrament. Uh, today we're going to kind of zero in on one of the sacraments, and we'll do that over the next five uh, lessons, uh, the sacrament of holy baptism. So today, just very briefly here in this brief video, I uh, just want to talk about uh, uh, just the question, what is baptism? Uh, baptism is what we call a means of grace. It, it's one of the ways God brings his grace to us. Uh, it is a very powerful way that he works in our lives, um, whether it's by creating faith in the heart of a, a little infant or a child or, or sealing the faith in an adult who's already come to faith by the power of the word. And, and we're going to learn over the next few weeks as we take a look at this that the word is really the heart and center of it. Is the God's word of promise is what gives baptism its power. It's it's life transforming. It's life changing uh, power. But we're going to start with the basics here today. Uh, last week we talked about uh, what a sacrament is. We kind of gave you uh, basically three things that are necessary for something to be. Uh, considered a sacrament. And, and I believe I basically went through baptism on that, but we're going to review it here a little bit today. Uh, when you take a look at baptism uh, as a sacrament, the first thing for a sacrament is it's commanded or instituted by God. Now, is baptism commanded or instituted by God? Well, the answer is yes, it is. Um, the uh, passage that you had for your memory work last week was Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Uh, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. Uh, Jesus gives us that great commission. We're to be about building the church, about making disciples. And one of the fundamental ways is through baptism. And, of course, baptism is connected uh, with teaching. So did it God institute it? Well, certainly, yes. And there's numerous other passages in the New Testament where it, God tells us in his word that we are to baptize or we are to be baptized. Well, for a sacrament uh, to take place, it has to be, first of all, commanded by God, which we've already covered, but then uh, there is a certain external or visible element that needs to be connected with God's word of promise. Does baptism have that? What would that be? Well, right outside the windows right now, it's raining. Water. We're baptized with water. Water is connected with God's word of promise. Uh, for many of you, if you're a little baby, and maybe I baptized some of you, Pastor Morris might have, well, no, he probably didn't baptize any of you. Um, but uh, when I baptized you, or the pastor who did, or perhaps a parent if it was an emergency, they took you, they took water, and they poured it on your head and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It was commanded by God. There is water connected with God's word of promise. Now the third thing for a sacrament is that it offers or conveys forgiveness of sins and other blessings that Christ won for us on the cross. Does the Bible give witness to that about baptism? And I would say yes. Um, we can go and look in, in Acts 2 verse 38, and there Peter says to the people, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, baptized for forgiveness of sins. Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe 
will be condemned. Sounds to me like Scripture is attributing baptism as a way God gives us forgiveness, life, and salvation. And, and actually, it's even bigger than forgiveness because we're forgiven, we get what? Eternal life, right? And that's the way I like uh, the Apostle Paul puts it this way in Romans. I want to read you a passage from Romans chapter 6. Actually, Romans chapter 6, verse uh, uh, 3 through verse 11. And listen to what Paul says baptism does for us. I mean, this is God doing very real things for you and for me through baptism, through water, connected with the word, at God's command. Listen to what Paul says. He says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. What did we deserve because of our sins? We deserve death, right? But our death wouldn't be sufficient to pay the price of sins. But Jesus is was, right? And so Paul tells us that through baptism, we're connected with the death of Jesus. That his death becomes our death. And he also goes on to say that if his death is our death, what else did Jesus do? He rose from the grave, right? And so his resurrection becomes ours. I'm going to go on at verse 5. For we have, if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him. That's us. Our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. You see, sin doesn't have its hold over us anymore. Because we're redeemed children of God. We're connected through baptism, through our faith relationship with Jesus, to his death and his resurrection. He says, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Why do we make such a big deal over baptism in our church? Because of this. Because it is a way in which God brings his salvation to people like you and people like me. Um, so... Is baptism a sacrament? I'd say yes. What about you? Would scripture attest to that? Yeah, I believe so. Now, just to wrap out the video, I want to deal with just one other thing. Uh, where we get this uh, word baptize. Uh, baptize in the New Testament comes from a Greek word, baptizo. Kind of sounds like it baptize and uh, we find that uh, we're going to look at uh, how do we baptize in, in upcoming videos and different things like that and and the importance of it but uh, baptize or baptizo baptize you know what it means it simply means to wash to wash with water um, and there was traditions in the uh, Jewish faith uh, in which they baptized things. Now, see, we would teach that, uh, and, and we do teach, you'll read it in the Catechism as you study the lesson this uh, week, um, that it simply means to wash by applying water through immersion, maybe sprinkling or pouring. Um, there are some that teach, oh, you've got to be immersed. Immersion is great. There's a great picture and symbolism to it. The idea of drowning the old man, that the new man can come forth. But the Bible doesn't really specify mode or quantity. It's just that water is applied. Okay? Um, one of the verses that we can look at and, and get some of the tradition and how 
baptize or baptizo is used uh, is in Mark 7, 3 to 4. Um, there it says, for the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash, and the word used is a form of baptizo, they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come in from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. Um, baptizo again. And it goes on. There are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing. It's a participle form of batsidzo, uh, the washing of cups, pots, copper vessels, and catch this, dining couches. I don't know about you, but in many of our homes, I don't think that we have, you know, a place big enough to dunk a couch or a dining couch. But, you know, there's a lot of people that hold to how much it is. The important thing is that we, at God's command, apply water connected with the Word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to a person to baptize them. And God, through that action, by the power of the Holy Spirit, working through that water and the Word, gives them all the cool stuff that Paul talked about. All right, the lessons before you, um, we're going to continue over the next five weeks, or actually four weeks after this week, um, to learn more about the great stuff God does for us in and through baptism. God bless your studies this week.